everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Kirsty and on today's video I'm going to be talking through my February reading wrap up. A little bit in February, what did I get up to? How many books did I read? How many pages etc etc because apparently you guys like stats. So I read 10 books, this equated to 3,166 pages. The average rating I gave on Goodreads was 3.75 and the average core pile was 6.83. So a pretty average month and um, definitely there are two books in particular that dragged that score way, way down. And so let's have a look into it. And as always, we're going to start with the lowest rating book. And uh, we're starting off with one hell of a doozy. Uh, I am already predicting this is going to be my worst book of the year. And that book is Love on the Brain. To use my Goodreads review that's in front of me as a little bit of a reference, here are some of the things I hated about this book without giving away spoilers. Whiny characters. The main character has a disability that is only actually come in, that only comes into play when it's convenient for the author to make her seem as weak and pathetic as physically possible. Nothing ever gets explained, she's never tried to seek treatment from it and it just sort of seems to be a thing that becomes a source of amusement for other people and I do not appreciate that. Ridiculous references to Marie Curie, sometimes it didn't even fit the context of what was going on in the book. I don't understand why this character, yes, be have her as a hero but literally every other page there was a Marie Curie reference and as I said sometimes it did not make any sense as to why it was in there. People keep saying this is the Love Hypothesis 2.0. It wasn't. I thought the Love Hypothesis was great and I would still go back and reread it. This was different and I hated the miscommunication between this where she was so all she could see was that he hated her even when he was standing there going I don't hate you and it was so clear that it was the opposite she just would not let it go. I also figured out one of the twists, I think on the first chapter, I was like, oh, I already know who that's gonna be. And I was right. And the spicy scenes were not nice in this. There was one bit in particular where she was on her knees and he told her to do a thing. And I felt physically sick. And I was sat there going very green in the gills. And yeah, though I didn't like the writing in this. She kept using things like mansplaining TM, Oh, what was it? All these things. I could probably just open a random page and it'll be something will be there. Oh, maybe not. But all these words that she created that it was like, oh, guy lead TM. All of this kind of thing. And it was just so annoying. And then finally, I do not understand this character's obsession with cat's anal glands. If you have read the book, I do not understand. If you have read the book and given it five stars, when there is a character who's literally like desperate and obsessed with this guy's cat and its anal glands. I don't understand you. So yeah, you could probably tell this book disgusted me and I was so severely let down because I adored The Love Hypothesis. And yeah, no, I've just spent five minutes ranting about one book. That's a great start. That one got two stars and 3.29. Next up at number nine, we have The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary and Again, I don't understand how people gave this five star. Again, this was a book where it was the second time I'd read something from the author. I loved the first book, hated the second one. There are multiple characters in this series, in this book that should be in prison. And yet their actions are laughed about and instantly forgiven. There are trigger warnings for sexual assault and stalking in this book. And if, I, if that side of things wasn't enough, like I, a lot of people complain about the insta love in this, but I didn't mind it so much because, you know, when you're young, you do fall in love quite quickly. At least I used to. Still do. <laughs> but I quite liked the first quarter of this. And then very quickly it went downhill. It started to get ridiculous. I really hated all the conflict between the characters and I hated the main storyline that happened and when we found out the reason why these two broke up, I was like, bitch, why are you even speaking to this guy? Why did you even let him in the car? You should have run him over with your car. And then there was points where they were starting to get close again and I was like, seriously? Someone needs to throw a brick at this girl. And they're travelling up to Scotland for this wedding. They left, I think it was like 
London or something, they left at five in the morning the day before the wedding, and yet they barely got to the wedding the following day in the early afternoon or late morning on time with how extensive our road systems are and the alternative options they had. Like, they all had money. They could have just got on a train. And I'm sorry, I just found it absolutely unbelievable. And I just, the situations that were happening along the road trip in the now section and it just took me completely out of the story and I just did not give a shit about anybody in this book they are all awful people none of them had redeeming qualities and they can all go for themselves that got two stars 2.5 stars sorry and 4.5 on core pile next up we had middle grade the ice sea pirates by Frieda Nilsson not really much to say about this it was okay it was a pretty cute adventure. I We didn't really get much relationship between the sisters and their dad before the younger sister was taken by the pirates. So I kind of felt like I wasn't really emotionally invested in the reason why she was going on this adventure. I also didn't like the fact that she kept meeting people and within a chapter, they might as well not have been there again. And I don't know, it just felt a little bit rushed in places for me. But obviously, if I was a young kid, I probably would have loved this. I will say, though, surprising trigger warning for animal abuse. It, there are various forms of animals getting beaten, killed, shot at, exploited, etc. And that was quite heavy for such a kid's novel. So I will definitely say go into this with maybe if you have, if you're letting your six, seven year old read it. I'd say maybe read it with them. If you've got a 10 year old, it should be fine for them. It wasn't like super graphic, but for younger kids, it might be a little bit disturbing. I gave this three stars and it got 5.75, uh, 5.57 on Core Pile. Next up, we had a graphic novel and an arc that arrived and the second it arrived, I got into it and I loved it. And that was Project Nought by Chelsea Fioridi. This follows Ren and Mars. Ren is from 1996. He's going on a trip to visit his pen pal in Georgia. Or is it a pen pal called Georgia? Can't remember. But suddenly he finds himself waking up in 2122, so 100 years in the future. And in this future reality, time travel has become a thing, but only one way. So they can bring people from the past to the present. And the people that they transport to the present then get teamed up with current students who are on the time science C program. So that's where we have Mars. What I really liked about this, I it threatened a couple of times to get confusing, but then it pulled itself back, so it did explain things. It had some really good twists that I didn't see coming, and the very end, I was completely invested and blown away. The main thing I didn't enjoy about this was the romance that it's plugged, and literally this book is 90% plugged based on the romance, but I felt they barely shared any page time, and then suddenly they're just falling for each other and kissing, and I was like, um, they've known each other for literally two days, and we as the audience have only seen them together for about 20 pages. I, I don't get it. And I was actually more invested in two of the side characters than I was in this. But one of the things I really did love about this is gender is just completely a non-thing. And they even talk about that gender constructs have been completely obliterated. I look forward to a world where you can just be yourself, identify how the fuck you want, and nobody's gonna question you over it. I look forward to when that part of this world some of the conspiracy stuff and the dark seedy underground stuff that's going on in the background maybe you could do without but yeah that side where it's you know gender constructs have been completely destroyed and nobody has to follow set things it's great and one thing that is brilliant with Ren is when he realizes that you know compared to the 90s for him it was very eye-opening but I did really really enjoy this overall I gave it four stars and it got 7.14 on core pile then we finally have one where I've cleared off a book on the self-destruct. So yay, I've actually read one of my self-destruct books this year. And that is Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I can see why this is such a staple for young people and why it's considered a pioneering book within the LGBT community, specifically for YA. It had some fantastic conversations around the topic of coming out and whose decision that is and when you should come out or when it's appropriate to come out. One of the big things in this is that Simon 
is being blackmailed by a guy who threatens to out him to everybody. And ultimately, Simon does end up being outed and it's not his choice. And there are some really, really strong, hard-hitting conversations about that and about the thing. I did have a couple of issues with this book. In particular, the biggest thing that pissed me off about this, even though Simon knew who his blackmailer was and once it was all out in the open, the person who did the blackmailing had zero repercussions. And that really annoyed me because that person deserved a lot of stuff to come down on them. I also really didn't like Leah in this. I found her to be very whiny. I don't know, she just had a really bad attitude and she just made everything about her even when it wasn't. Why is there hail when it's bright sunshine outside? <laughs> it's just British weather. Love March. And yeah, I just really did not like Leah. I didn't like a lot of the side characters, but I also really did love the relationship that Simon has with his sisters. And I thought that that was so awesome, the way they came together. So this isn't a series that I will continue, but I did really enjoy this one. And I absolutely can see why it should be essential reading for middle grade to lower end high school kids, because I think it has a really good conversation around being gay, coming out, and attitudes towards people who do. Four stars for this one again, and 7.57. Next thing we'll talk about is a series I read. There are five, six books currently out. I have read four of them, and the fifth one I will be starting to read today. And that is the series I Hear the Sunspot by Yuki Firmino. For this series, we follow two main characters. We have got... Taichi, who is your happy-go-lucky, outgoing guy, and then we have Kohei, who is hard of hearing. He got sick when he was younger, the infection went into his ears and unfortunately caused permanent damage, which means that he's now got a very severe hearing problem, and he does use um, hearing aids to make his experience a bit better. As a result, Kohei found that people treated him differently almost instantaneously, and so because of all of that, he decided it was better to withdraw himself and just become very recluse and be on his own. And then there's this one day where they meet kind of by accident. Um, tai Chi basically just falls on him out of the sky <laughs> and they form a friendship. And in return, Tai Chi does the note taking for Kohei very badly, I might say. Uh, and in payment for him doing that, Kohei brings him cooked lunches. So that forms a friendship. Kohei then starts to fall for Tai Chi, admits it, and then we just start this kind of will they, won't they kind of relationship. But some of the best things that I loved about this series was the different variety, the different viewpoints that Yuki brings in. We don't just get Kohei's perspective. We then get Maya later on in the series, who is also hard of hearing, but in a different way to Kohei. We then get Ryu. He was born deaf and has never been able to hear. We've then got Ryu's brother, whose name slips me, but he works for a company. It works for? Yeah, he works at a company that um, works to make workplaces more inclusive for the deaf community because... He's obviously grown up with you and knows the problems that his younger brother has had. And he also has taught himself um, sign language. And one of the things that I really, really, really did love is how it showed everybody's viewpoint from the viewpoint of the people with the disabilities. So with Ryu, at one point, Kohei is considering getting the cochlear implant and Ryu is like taking the thing off him and ripping it up and saying, why do you need this? embrace the fact that you're deaf you should accept it and there's nothing wrong with being deaf so you got that really passionate side that I know does happen within the deaf community there is quite a discourse within the community between hard of hearing and completely deaf people obviously I'm not hard of hearing I'm not part of the community but I have got a couple of friends who are and these are experiences that they themselves have told me about that does happen within the deaf community is that there can be almost an elitist view from those who are completely deaf who really do sometimes look down on those who are looking to get things like cochlear implants and hearing aids and things like that because they don't feel they should do. And apparently it's quite a big issue within that community. 
Another thing that I have experienced in my own life and is something that I feel gets overlooked. A lot of the time people with disabilities are always portrayed in media as being the victims. They are always the ones that are being bullied. They are always the ones who are the weaker, the more vulnerable and never stand up for themselves. However, in this series, it actually shows at one point that it's the deaf people who are being the bullies. Tai Chi goes to an event with Kohei and Tai Chi at this point, I'm not going to say what happens exactly, but he ends up in a situation where he then immediately starts to learn sign language and he is working his hardest to try and do this. So he goes to an event with Kohei that's at a deaf play, it's like a deaf cafe for deaf people and the deaf community and he's trying his hardest. He's using the limited sign that he knows to communicate and then at one point Kohei looks over and sees Tai Chi's trying to talk and somebody says something, like signs something and next thing Tai Chi knows he's being dragged out of there by an enraged Kohei and then it ends up that somebody else, I can't remember if it's Kohei or do you, ends up punching the guy that was doing the signing. Because what they were doing is while Tai Chi was sat there trying to communicate as best he could, they were teasing him and tormenting him and basically being really horrible and taking the mickey out of him and how rudimentary his sign language is and basically going, oh, look at him, he doesn't know sign language, what an absolute dick kind of attitude. And I have experienced this when I was at university, I wanted to learn sign language. So I signed up to the university sign language club. I went to my very first session and I said, I'm an absolute novice. I, the only sign language I've known, my mum had a little coaster on her bedside table that had the alphabet and I've forgotten most of that. And I said to them that, and I tried in the first, I was trying to copy, and I kept hearing sniggering behind me. And it was a couple of girls who both were deaf. And I thought it was a club more for people wanting to learn sign language. And in actual fact, it turned out to be more a clique of people who were already in the deaf community, already knew sign language, and it was used as a bit of a hangout. So when I went and I was trying to actually learn, instead I just felt really disheartened because I was always being teased and laughed at and people were quite rude. And when I got a sign wrong, people were like rolling their eyes and I was just like, you keep, you're telling me that you want people to learn sign language, but then you're treating people trying to learn sign language really badly. And it actually showed that in the manga. So it was nice to show so many different ways Obviously, there was points in there where it also showed people being bullied and it showed Kohei's experiences of being treated like people going, oh, we should invite him because he's the disabled guy. So it will show that we're actually trying to be inclusive. And it's like, no, no. But it also did then have a bit of commentary about how Japan as a society needs to improve and looks at ways that it is currently trying to improve. So yeah, overall I've given this series 4.5 stars and I had a fantastic time. So now you're going to be wondering what could possibly top what I've just been discussing and the only five star read that I had for the month. And I'm going to tell you that the book that got the highest rating for me was Delilah Green Doesn't Care. I absolutely absorbed this book and I, I think I read it in two or three days. I... It wasn't many sittings. I was reading it in massive chunks at a time. You can tell how much I loved it. In particular, there is one scene. I have pretty much completely highlighted the two pages. And what I loved about it in particular was just the casual way that Delilah just handed her stuff to Claire, just goes, hold on to these for me, and then goes and does something absolutely spectacular. And I loved her. I really liked the complexity of the characters, particularly Delilah. I understood where she came from a lot of the time. I feel like I can relate quite a lot to her, more in the perspective of her relationship with her stepsister. I have mentioned in my vlog, so I'm not going to mention too much here, but I've talked about how my older sister and I have had similar kind of misunderstandings between each other that we are now working on and we are trying to improve our relationship. And... So I felt very much like I could relate to Delilah. I also had a lot of similarities to Claire with the anxiety and the feeling inadequate with a lot of the things she tries to do. But this was the second or third sapphic book that I've read. 
because for some reason I just don't tend to stray towards sapphic books and yet I've loved every single sapphic book I've read. This had absolutely, it had me laughing out loud, it had me tearing up on a couple of points. I desperately want this to be a film now because I really want to see the camp, the photography stuff um, in real life. I do a lot of photography, well I used to do a lot of photography myself and I do still love photography so for me that was a huge thing as well and when she was talking to Claire's daughter about artistic things I just my heart was happy and the whole way through this I was extremely happy it did fall into I think it was Charlotte from Clumsy Charlotte said that at times it did fall into a little bit too cliche with the rom-com stuff like they went on a camping trip and they went rollerblading and things like that but some of the quotes that came from those moments, some of the things that happened within those moments, I was like, do you know what? I don't care. I'm having such a fun, good time. I absolutely love this with every fibre of my being and I can't wait to do another reread of this at some point. And I really wish I'd gotten to it a lot quicker, but it was so good and perfect for Valentine's. So yay. That one got five stars, a solid nine on Core Pile. And yeah, it was a fantastic time. So those are all the books that I read in February. My March reading so far is not going so great, but we will get into that in a few weeks time. Let me know in the comments what you read throughout February and what was your book of the month. I hope you're all good. I hope you're staying safe. And until next time, 